Hello, my name is Jonathan Collazo, and this is a recorded PowerPoint presentation to be graded by Dr. Sandra Rios, Professor of English 3236 Technical Writing. On this presentation, I will be talking about an educational trip to Colombia that I had the opportunity to participate in this semester. The main objectives of this presentation include describing the main purpose of this educational trip. I would also like my audience to familiarize with the skill I learned in the trip, and hence, you will hear a lot about laparoscopy in this presentation. Last but not least, I want to share with you part of my touristic experience in this beautiful Latin American country, Colombia. Educational trip to Colombia. The main purpose of this trip was for students to learn about a very interesting assisted reproduction technique. By this, I mean insemination technique, using a surgical procedure called laparoscopy. We visited some farms in Colombia as well, and some parks to learn about their agricultural industry and culture, which is quite solid and impressive. This trip also provides students with a dose of knowledge. What you learn here goes beyond that which you learn in a normal classroom. What is a laparoscopy? A laparoscopy is a surgical procedure, but this one is minimally invasive. This means that the incisions that you need for the surgery do not exceed half an inch long, and there is no need for sutures. The animal recovers quickly and the pain is minimum. The instrument used to perform this surgery is called a laparoscope, a very useful tool since it allows surgeons to see inside a patient's body without major incisions. This is used in many other surgeries and examinations, including human surgeries. As you can see, laparoscopy is a really useful technique, but there is no perfect technique. Here I show you some pros and cons of laparoscopy as an insemination method. The first pro is the higher pregnancy rates. Artificial insemination can be done in four ways. In order of pregnancy rates from low to high, these are vaginal, cervical, transcervical, and laparoscopy. This last one gives pregnancy rates up to 85%. That's a big milestone for artificial insemination. Another pro is that it is a less traumatizing experience for the animal. The sheep is anesthetized, so it does not feel so much pain. This way, we minimize stress, which also helps with pregnancy rates. This technique requires an enclosed and sterile environment to reduce the, the risk of infection through contact with dirty surfaces. This way is more hygienic than traditional artificial insemination, which is usually performed in the barn where the environment is not as controlled. Laparoscopy also has some negative aspects. The biggest obstacle is how expensive it is. The main tool, the laparoscope, is about $4,000. For a tool that you may use once a year if you own the farm, that's a lot. Another bad thing is the need of a trained personal to perform this surgery, which also costs money. In Puerto Rico, only licensed vets can perform a laparoscopy on animals. We perform these techniques under the supervision of a veterinarian 24-7. After the laparoscopy is done, the animal must be kept under watch. With other insemination techniques, the animal needs no further attention after the procedure, which means that laparoscopy will take some more time than you would expect from a normal insemination technique. Do you remember that $4,000 tool? Well, this is it. This metal piece is a laparoscope. It is the main tool for the procedure. As I said before, it helps the surgeon see inside a patient's body. This tool will always count with a connector for external light sources. Without it, the surgeon would only see darkness inside of the animal or human. These are really, really expensive, like I said, so we had to be really careful with them. Better not drop it. This is another component of the procedure. This is a laparoscopic needle. Here, semen is stored until it is deposited directly inside the uterine horns. It takes a lot of practice to correctly use these needles. This, along with the laparoscope, are the main tools for a laparoscopy. To perform 
artificial insemination, you can either use frozen semen or fresh semen. In this case, we use frozen semen. This semen is stored in tanks filled with liquid nitrogen, like the one in the picture. Nitrogen is a gas at room temperature, but it becomes a liquid when it reaches minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit. These low temperatures allow sperm to be conserved for way longer than it would at environmental conditions. The semen must be thawed for at least 15 seconds at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so sperm can regain, regain movement. This is achieved by applying warm water. After thawed, semen must be used quickly since it is very fragile. Too much light, air or water could kill the spermatozoids. On the strip, we learn how to freeze semen to use it on even two or three months after the semen was collected from the male. The main purpose of the strip was for us, the students, to learn how a laparoscopy is performed. So these are some of the steps taken to perform a laparoscopy. First, we must pick the animals, of course, and everything we do will be done under strict veterinarian supervision. Uh, a veterinarian should be with you at all times. You cannot perform any of the steps without a veterinarian saying you can do so. We want the animals to be in optimal conditions. That is all our main concern. And we are playing with an animal's health when we are performing a surgery. So we must be really careful. First thing, we must immobilize the animal using a gurney. This is like the kind of beds they use in surgeries at hospitals where you were tied up. The patient is anesthetized to reduce pain since we want the animal to be as comfortable as possible while performing the surgery. We must shave and disinfect the area to be intervened to avoid bacterial infections or other illnesses. Also, all the tools you will use on the surgery must be sanitized before they are used. When the animal is ready, the laparoscopy is performed. I will give, I will give you more details further. The animal is kept under vigilance. This process doesn't last long if the anesthesia is correctly employed. By that I mean that the correct concentration of anesthesia is used depending on the animal's body weight. If you use more anesthesia that, than he needs, the animal will be sleepy for at least an hour or two. And if you don't use enough anesthesia, the animal might suffer, might suffer some pain during the, the surgery. And you've been hearing a lot about laparoscopy, but what is it? Well, how is it done? The process of performing a laparoscopy is really delicate. We must measure about 4 inches from the animal's udders and make two small incisions. As I said before, these incisions cannot exceed a quarter of an inch or half an inch. The smaller, the better, and the easier for you to manipulate the tools you're using in the laparoscopy. Through these incisions, we insert the required equipment, equipment, that being the laparoscope and the insemination syringe, as you can see in the picture. Air is constantly flowing inside the abdomen, thanks to a tool, uh, I'd say an implement in the laparoscope, where you can connect an oxygen tank or any, any other kind of air supply. So the abdomen is always um, full of air and you can see perfectly inside of the animal with the help of the external light source connected to the laparoscope as well. This provides visibility to the surgeon. With the laparoscope, we search for the uterine horns. We must first find the uterus, which is a bigger structure and it's easier to find. And when we locate the uterine horns, which are right on top of the uterus, we use the insemination needle to deliver the semen in the uterine horns. This is the technique used for insemination. After you are done with one of the uterine horns, you look for the other one, because there are two, and you inseminate in that one as well to make sure that sperm reaches the egg. This was, without any doubt, 
the coolest part of this trip. As you can see in this picture, that's me performing a laparoscopy. This was like the third day of the trip and we were already employing everything we learned. Well, on this picture you can see I'm using my right hand to operate the laparoscope and the light source and my left hand to operate the syringe. I am left handed so I needed to use my more delicate hand to control this insemination needle. This is a very delicate process. After I use the laparoscope to find the uterus and the uterine horns, I then insert the needle, find it with the la laparoscope as well, then direct the needle to the horn carefully, insert it, and tell the person that you see on the left of the picture to use that syringe on top of the needle to impulse the semen that's inside of the needle to the insides of the uterine horns. This is a really delicate process and it is really di um, difficult since the laparoscope gives a kind of warped vision of what you're actually seeing inside of the animal. It is not what you expect. One of my favorite parts of this trip was to learn about animal science in Colombia, which is the part of agriculture I love the most. Let's see what we found there. For an animal scientist, I'd say this is one of the best parts of the trip, and it was visi visiting some farms. On the left, uh, I'm posing with a champion Katarin breed sire. This is one of the many beautiful animals at El Redil Farms. This is the place where we learn how to perform a laparoscopy. They have many more animals like this, way bigger, way stronger, and not as friendly as this one was. Uh, on the right, you can see a bull. The breed is Blonde de Aquitaine, and he is called Millonario. As you can see, Millonario is really big. This is not because of hormones, this is not because of any dietary supplement or any weird experiment that went wrong. No, this is nature, this is genes, this is selection. Years and years of genetic selection within the farm to have an animal this big with so much meat in its body. Yeah, we spent five days in Colombia. Three of them were used for teaching us how to perform a laparoscopy and then there were two days for tourism. In those three days of learning the techniques we also were able to visit some places, some plazas and some towns to buy some souvenirs. But the two days we went to parks, they were really special and I'd like to share them with you, my audience. On our first day of tourism, we visited Recuca. This is a really beautiful park located in the middle of a country place. You can see the coffee crops by your side when you're getting there and you can see the animals and all the nature that is involved in this country place which is just beautiful and really different to what you can see in Puerto Rico. Well, here we can see two pictures of the coffee theme parks we visited. On top, as I said, you can see Recuca. On this park, you can live Colombia's coffee culture. You can participate in picking coffee, walk through their coffee crops, and see how coffee is processed for export in Colombia. Beneath is part of the experience at Parque del Café, which translates to the coffee park. It counts with a variety of mechanical attractions, as well as modern museums where you can also explore Colombia's coffee history. We were able to present the Show del Café, or the coffee show, which is a dance recital about Colombia's history, history and culture. Unfortunately, no pictures were allowed during the show, and I can bring none of them for this presentation. But it is full of color, beautiful dresses, and dance. Also, as part of the trip, we were able to visit some towns. We stayed at Hotel Gregorio in Cartago. This allowed us to explore the city. Its architecture is very rustic and appealing, as you can appreciate in the picture at the top of the slide. On the bottom picture, I'm standing in front of Kimbaya's Cathedral and a I love Kimbaya sign. Kimbaya was one of the towns we visited to buy souvenirs and appreciate more of Colombia's culture. This town is really beautiful, and the tourism here is really welcome.
Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome day.